welcome to The Watchman. 1,000 years ago, 100 years ago, it would have been impossible. But today, a relationship that was once unthinkable is growing. And I believe it has the potential to change the world. Folks, Bible-believing Christians and Jews are coming together for such a time as this. I see it firsthand when I speak at pro-Israel events around the country. Christians are standing with the Jewish state and their Jewish friends are returning the love and appreciation after centuries of anti-Semitism at the hands of people who claim to be Christians but were anything but. Rabbi Yaquil Eckstein has been at the very forefront of this movement for decades. His organization, the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews, is one of the largest nonprofit organizations in the world. And for many evangelical Christians, the fellowship and Rabbi Eckstein's TV programming have been the gateway to their support for and education about Israel and the Jewish people. Well, Rabbi Eckstein's amazing life story is chronicled in a new authorized biography called The Bridge Builder, The Life and Continuing Legacy of Rabbi Yaquil Eckstein. I talked to him recently to discuss the book, the fellowship's work, and what the Iran nuclear deal means not only for Israel, but for America. Take a look. Talk about the, the humble beginnings of IFCJ and how it was tough getting things off the ground. You faced a lot of challenges. I did indeed, and I didn't have a secretary, I didn't have an office, I didn't have a salary, uh, and I asked Pat how he did all that he did and created and built this, this uh, ministry of CBN, and he said, uh, it's in God's hands and I'll be praying for you and your ministry. Well, I remember walking out of that a meeting with him and thinking, oh my gosh, there's another Christian who's going to be praying for me when I need <laughs> a secretary and an office and a phone, <laughs> etc. And the next day right. I got to the office in Chicago and uh, there was a $10,000 check from Pat. So um, uh, it's, it really started with nothing. Uh, God's blessed us. As you said, we are now one of the largest um, organizations in the world and certainly in Israel. And the funds are coming 99% from Christians. And so I believe that what we're witnessing is of the Lord, of uh, Christians blessing Israel and the Jewish people, like Genesis 12, 3 says. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, that's serving as a witness to the Jewish people that true Christians are truest and best friends of Israel and the Jewish people. Yeah, and Rabbi, it wasn't always easy. In, in the great new authorized biography, the Bridge Builder talks about your life story and how you built the fellowship. We have this great Christian pro-Israel movement now that's large, it's growing, but it wasn't always this easy. You were a pioneer and you faced a lot of pushback in the beginning, right? I did indeed. Uh, I was rejected, anathema to the Jewish community. I remember the first time I brought Jerry Falwell of blessed memory to my synagogue. Uh, in Chicago, I had my head handed to me and uh, by the Jewish community. And the same thing was true because of my relationship with uh, Pat Robertson. The two of them were lightning rods, uh, but at the same time, they were leaders of, um, of this whole movement. Today, you can read in the newspapers, uh, the New York Times about Jews and evangelical Christians mm -hmm. opposing the Iran deal or something. That phrase, Jews and evangelical Christians, is, is understood now as a given. But as you pointed out, it, it, it took a lot of pain. The people who have read the book have said to me that they, Christians and Jews, that they were shocked by the pain um, that I had to go through in yeah. reaching out to work with the Christian community, essentially kicked out of my yeshiva, where mm -hmm. I studied Talmud every day, uh, excommunicated by some rabbis, attacked. There were moments, uh, times where I needed physical security guards around me because of threats. And the interesting thing is, is that while it's, it's 
pretty much gone and, and uh, vindicated, uh, I've been mm -hmm. vindicated, you still have rabbis on the more right-wing Orthodox, uh, and I'm an Orthodox rabbi, but on the more mm -hmm. right-wing who uh, continue every day almost to attack me and to say that it's prohibited to use any of the gifts that we give. Uh, we built 6,000 bomb shelters in Israel, and each one says a gift of love from Christians in America. There are rabbis who say that even in the case of war, they can't, they're not allowed to go into that bomb shelter because it was given by Christians. So you still have um, some groups and some individuals that can't accept the fact that after 2,000 years of fratricide and enmity, mm -hmm. there is a new true Bible-believing Christian that has emerged, and they are our best friends and allies. Yeah and who understands the Jewish roots of Christianity. I want everyone to understand, Rabbi, in the book, it's one of the things that struck me as well, the great personal sacrifice you paid and a lot of torment, a lot of pain uh, to Indeed. pioneer this movement. All of us in the pro-Israel movement owe you a great, great debt for your vision, your bravery, your courage here. Thank um, you. I want to talk Thank a little bit more about what the felt, we're going to talk about Iran in the time we have left and a great new commercial that the fellowship has produced about warning about this Iran nuclear deal and the consequences. But real quick, tell us a little bit more about the fellowship. And by the way, you can find ifcj.org. You can go see what the fellowship is doing, take part in what they're doing. Tell us a bit more about what you're doing, in the, not only in the land of Israel right now, but with Holocaust survivors in Russia and around the world for the Jewish people. Well, thank you um, for that question. We have a number of programs. The one that uh, really was the first program we started that Christians have uh, uh, contributed so much to is called On Wings of Eagles, which mm -hmm. is bringing Jews on Aliyah from the four corners of the world as Isaiah prophesied, he even prophesied in chapter 49, a day will come when the Gentiles will carry your sons on their shoulders and daughters in their arms and bring them to the land of Israel. So we're witnessing the fulfillment of prophecy and millions, we have 1.5 million Christian donors. And we have already brought 400,000 Jews from Ethiopia, from Russia, from the Ukraine. Uh, we just recently brought a group um, from an Arab country that I can't mm. mention. And we now, because of the situation in Ukraine, we're focusing there because there are Jewish refugees we've been caring for for 20 2,600 refugees who fled Donetsk, Lugansk, Mariupol, and eastern Ukraine. We set up a refugee camp, the first time since World War II that Jews needed a refugee camp. And now we're bringing them to Israel. We started with one flight a week, a month. Now we're up to two. We've already brought over 1,000 um, Jews from, from there. And it's all... Yeah. sponsored by Christians. Then we have a program called Isaiah 58, which refers to the chapter in Isaiah that a true fast is feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, not averting our eyes from our flesh and blood. And that helps elderly in the former Soviet Union, children in the former Soviet Union, orphans, street children, and we Holocaust help- Holocaust survivors. Holocaust survivors. We've been through so exactly. much already. Yes. And then we have, with food, clothing, medicine, heating fuel, and then we have our program in Israel called Guardians for Israel, which helps with poverty and security um, for the people of Israel. It's, it's really rather outrageous that we just have a few more years for these Holocaust survivors to live. And yeah. they, have so many of them, even in Israel, every day have to make a decision between food and medicine and their rent and water. And, and it's outrageous that, they, uh, that we can't let them lead 
the last twilight years of their life with a sense of dignity. So all of these are programs that Christians are stepping up to the plate and blessing Israel and Jewish people. And then finally, we have a program called Stand for Israel, which is our prayer and advocacy uh, component, uh, which we... Um, um, which we just have now taken uh, to direct towards the uh, Iran Treaty that America has. We've already, yeah. um, and the ad uh, that uh, you, you refer to, which is now on Fox and right. different Rabbi, places. Rabbi, we're going to take, I don't, let me stop you right there for a second. We're going to take a look at the ad right now, folks. This is an ad by the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews warning about this disastrous Iran deal. Take a look. We'll have more from my interview with Rabbi Eckstein later in the show. But up next, we continue our tour of the growing relationship between Bible-believing Christians and Jews with a look at the 2015 Christians United for Israel, KUFI National Summit. Stick around. And welcome back. Since its founding in 2006, Christians United for Israel, KUFI, has grown into the largest pro-Israel organization in America, with over 2.2 million members. At its Washington summit recently, supporters of Israel from around the country gathered to stand up for the Jewish state and to stand against an Iran nuclear deal that is a disaster. I was honored to speak at the summit, and along with my CBN News colleague, Angela Zadepec, filed this report. Take a look. Good afternoon, everybody. With the Obama administration and other world powers agreeing to a much criticized nuclear deal with the Iranian regime, Israel is counting on its friends in America to step up and speak out. This week in Washington, Christians United for Israel did not disappoint. With Iran marching towards a nuclear weapon and ISIS marching towards its borders, Israel is in a very precarious position. That's why thousands of Christian supporters of the Jewish state came here to Washington to make their voices heard. KUFI founder Pastor John Hagee announced that his group is opening an office in Washington, D.C. to mobilize politically on issues affecting Israel. The KUFI Action Fund's first priority is to press Congress to stop the Iran nuclear deal. Our mission for the future is to defend the state of Israel and the Jewish people in a world where the Jewish people are being targeted for assassination. Hagee was joined by several Republican candidates in calling the Iran agreement an historic mistake for Israel and America. There's no way to have a legitimate framework with people who are continued sponsors of state terrorism. We need to have a deeper debate about this and the recognition that Past this prologue, history is full of examples of when you enable people or regimes that, that don't embrace democratic values uh, without any concessions, you get a bad result. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu also addressed the summit via satellite, warning that radical Islam is on the march against both Christians and Jews. Friends, the Middle East is imploding all around us. States that have existed for a century are, are disintegrating. I've said it before. And I'll say it once again tonight. Israel has no better friend than America, and America has no better friend than Israel. With an agreement reached between the West and Iranian leaders, Congress will now weigh in. Israel's ambassador to the United States encouraged KUFI members to continue to make their case to lawmakers. Last year, as Hamas missiles rained down from Gaza on Israel, I stood at this podium to ask you to stand with Israel during war. Tonight, I ask you to stand with Israel to prevent war. A regional war that could rage out of control if Iran acquires nuclear weapons and sparks a nuclear arms race among the Muslim nations of the Middle East. Up next, we share some clips from my speech at the KUFI summit, Iran, ISIS, and why you, as an American, should care. 
don't move. Welcome back. Israel's enemies are America's enemies. It's a point I make often on this show, and it was the theme of my message recently at the 2015 Kufi Washington Summit. I was joined on the Middle East briefing panel with great speakers like the Wall Street Journal's Brett Stevens, Gary Bauer, and American Jewish leader Malcolm Honline. Take a look. Today, I want to talk about the shared, key word, folks, shared threats gathering against Israel and America. Israel's enemies and America's enemies are one in the same. I want to talk about 1 and 1A, Iran and ISIS, and why you should care. Look, we have a lot of Americans today who are sitting there and they're looking at the chaos, the madness unfolding in the Middle East, and they say, hey, tough break for Israel. Tough break for those Christians that are literally losing their heads in the birthplace of Christianity, the cradle of the faith. It's a shame for them, but guess what? The Kardashians are on and I have my iPhone and it doesn't affect me. Folks, we need to shake people from their slumber here in America and let them know that yes, it does affect you. I'm gonna show you how today in the short time I have. Number one, ISIS, you may have heard of them. They now have a caliphate, a self-declared Islamic state covering 36,000 square miles of territory in the heart of the Middle East, folks. That's an area the size of Great Britain. That's astounding. In such a short period of time, ISIS now, look, ruling over 8 million unfortunate souls in Syria and Iraq and spreading its tentacles throughout the Middle East and North Africa into Yemen, Saudi Arabia, Lebanon, Nigeria, Algeria, Tunisia, Egypt, Sinai at Israel's doorstep. ISIS is at Israel's doorstep, I repeat. Not only in Egypt, in the Sinai Peninsula, but in Syria, creeping ever closer to the Golan Heights. Horrible what's happening in the Middle East. But why should you care? Here's an example. Recently, our FBI Director James Comey made a very stunning statement. He said that in all 50 U.S. states right now, we have investigations ongoing into ISIS-related activity on American soil. So, ladies and gentlemen, what our FBI Director is saying is that Literally, in every state of the Union, including Alaska and Hawaii, we have a network of ISIS supporters and sympathizers. No matter which state you're from, they're in your backyard. That's not alarmism. I'm quoting our FBI director. And folks, what he was saying is that the barbarians are not just at the gates, they're inside the gates. Folks, the first rule of war, no your enemy. If you do not know the enemy, you cannot defeat the enemy. The Iranian regime knows us. They've taken our measure. They smell weakness. It's all about ideology. Terrorism is only a tactic. If you don't understand the apocalyptic ideology of this Iranian regime, you're in big trouble. Unfortunately, our current leadership does not understand. You in 2015, the Bible talks about the men of Issachar, an elite group of 200 men surrounding King David who knew the signs and the times and knew what Israel should do about it. You are the men and women of Issachar, Kufi. Coming up, more for my interview with Rabbi Yaquil Eckstein. Stick around. And welcome back. We're wrapping up here on The Watchman. Here's more from my interview with Rabbi Yaquil Eckstein. Tell us your concerns in, in the short time we have left about this Iranian nuclear deal. The implications not only for Israel and the Jewish people, exactly. but for America. This is a global threat. 
Exactly. Iran already has strategic ballistic missiles to reach Europe. They're going mm -hmm. to, within a very short time, have missiles that can reach the United States. So it's ICBMs. not just ICBMs, right? So it's not just an immediate existential threat to Israel and the Jewish people. We've learned from the Holocaust that when there are those who threaten to kill you, Take them seriously. And we've made a vow, never again. The difference between today and the Holocaust is that while America is our ally, our closest ally, we cannot trust in any other nation other than ourselves and, and God to guide us. And so mm -hmm. we all are aware that um, there is still on the table in Israel at the last moment possible, we can trust that Israel will do the right thing. And I don't believe that the president, President Obama, has really kept all the options on the table as he has. We saw what happened yeah. with the chemical weapons in Syria. And mm -hmm. so um, this is a threat to the world and an existential threat to Israel and the Jewish people. And millions of evangelical Christians this time around will be shoulder to shoulder with yes, you and with the Jewish people. And they you are. are a major reason for that, Rabbi. Thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for warning about this Iran deal. And folks, pick this book up. You see it right here, The Bridge Builder. It is a great authorized biography of Rabbi Eckstein, his fascinating backstory. It's inspiring. I encourage you to pick it up. And thank it makes you. sense of a lot of things that are going on today. So Rabbi Eckstein, thank you so much. It's ifcj.org. Check it out. Rabbi, keep up the great work. God bless you. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Eck. Shalom to you all. Thanks to Rabbi Eckstein for joining us. Again, folks, the book is called The Bridge Builder. Pick it up. It's a great read. And thank you for joining us here on The Watchman. Until next time, God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace.